Three, two, one, bang. Uh, all right, we are Same live. Way, we are live. We are live. Okay. All right, I'm still looking for it to come up. It come up yet? Here we go. Perfect. Yep. There you go. All right. You're I'm, right. I'm going to share it out. Why don't you introduce it? Do the sharing. And uh, all right. So tonight we are blessed with the presence of our brother. Thomas Keenan, the COO of Break Free Academy, better known as Apex, and um, he's uh, two times now best-selling author and uh, executive coach over at uh, Apex, and um, a bunch of other stuff, but all-around good guy, dad of three, um, represents New York down in Texas, which is uh, the best part, you know. Um, Thomas and me go way back, probably 20 years or so, back when he was uh, installing stereos in cars and whatnot. And his shop was across the street from the upholstery shop that I worked in. That was, uh, That's my how you know years. each other. Yeah, yeah. I, I, miss that you that. Yeah. I miss that bit. Wow. Yeah. And his partner, Jimmy, started putting tinting my windows and putting stereos in my first car when I was 17. And so, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a long time. Probably, it was only about 10 years ago when I was 17, so... Man, uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're actually laughing. My uh, the Camaro I drive around, the '69 Camaro, the white one with the orange stripes on the pace car. Thomas put the stereo in that car. So when I had that out at the New York event, I had the car there. I was actually thinking about that. Thomas actually put the stereo in that car. So that was kind of kind of a throwback there. That was got to be I don't know, ten years ago at least, maybe more. So uh, time flies when you're having fun. Yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. Uh, me and Sam came up with the idea. We had Chris Whitehead on last week and uh, Thomas this week. And we're going to try and get as many Goon Squad members as we can leading up into Goon Squad Live, uh, February 3rd in Texas. So that is a public event that those of you that are following this um, this show and aren't part of Apex can come experience what Apex is all about. Um, it's definitely uh, something you might want to uh, think about getting down to flights right now from New York. I think I just paid... Uh, about 70 bucks a flight um, so there's no excuse for that rooms are about a hundred and change a night a little over a hundred so um, there's really no excuse of why you can't jump on a plane and come change your life a little bit um, it's a new year new opportunities in front of us come check out what this apex thing is all about you guys see what it's done to me in the last year you've seen what it's done to Sam in the last year um, and Thomas, I mean, if and then he, Thomas, yeah, he doesn't even have a background, man. He, he doesn't have a background, yeah. We out background Thomas, but um, but, but back up a minute, back up a minute. What what's a goon squad? What's a goon squad, Thomas? Yeah, yeah. it all started as a joke, <clears throat> you know. Um, what Brian just mentioned here, and Sam, like you know, you as well. You guys have both been members of the Apex ecosystem for, you know. You know, Brian, you're coming up on a year. Sam, I don't even know how many years you are at this point. It'll, 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 be, t it'll be two in March. Yeah, okay, fine. March. So I I have the same initiation and entrance into the Apex ecosystem. I, May of 2018 is when I started. Mm -hmm. I came in as a client because I wanted to do better in my business. I wanted to elevate myself, um, get better at sales and marketing, right? And I came in and... It's like, oh, shit, this is pretty cool. This is some real people here who actually care about other people. And they, it's almost as if everyone within this Apex ecosystem is conspiring to help me win. 100%. It's the total feeling you get. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, except for right now, before we got on this, this show, if you guys were really conspiring to help me win, you would have notified me that I needed a custom <laughs> background and I would have showed up prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Boy Scout, always prepared, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, that's that's kind of how it started. <clears throat> and Brian, you know, um, you you weren't bullshitting, buddy. Uh, you and I have known each other for a long time, and it actually goes deeper than that because him and I grew up one town away from each other. And if he had gone to public school, we, we would have gone to high school together. Yeah, so, which is yeah. pretty wild. Yeah. yeah and, uh, just circle uh, back so, around to this. Yes. Yeah, little little quick side note here: the house that Brian currently owns is on the same block that my father grew up on. It's a small world. It's a real small world. It's pretty funky. So anyway. And I sold um, Thomas's house for over asking price right in the heat of COVID. <laughs> just, just a little plug, you know, when he went to Texas, you know. Oh, $35,000 over asking price. You sell, you price sell real estate, Brian. <laughs> no, no, I just, uh, you know. 
I just kind of, you know, that way. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no. So, uh, Thomas, uh, like I said we go way back, and I watched him from 2018 grow his business. Um, watching him, to, he was coming over and installing cameras in our trucks and doing all that type of stuff. And we used to always have conversations about business and what about this and what about that and employees and this and that. And then um, he really just dove in head first, and I just watched him straight up. I mean, like soar. And next thing you know, he's calling me up and saying, I'm moving to Texas for this Apex group. And I'm like, wow, he's really into this shit. Like, you know, and it really wasn't until um, I introduced Thomas to Jessica. And Jessica actually was the one who dragged me down to a uh, million dollar mastermind back in, I think it was the end of April last year. And yeah. uh, she was like, I have a ticket, you're going. And I was like, all right, I guess I'm going. And that was big for me because I had never flown by myself. I had never gone on a business trip. This was like, you know, I, I was home doing what I do. So, so for me to take a break and leave the state and by myself and to this foreign land and whatnot. And um, when I showed up there, it was just unbelievable. I was like, oh, this is why Thomas is here. The first night I got invited to the Goon Squad dinner. Um, so my first Apex experience was uh, Del Fresco's um, with uh, the whole Goon Squad and Jess and a couple other people. But basically it was the Goon yeah. Squad and that was my first group. And uh, definitely imposter syndrome set in big time. <laughs> and uh, I was like, holy shit, this group is uh, pretty wild, these guys here. And yeah. um, so, honestly... So Sam, yep. hold on a second here, because I completely dropped the ball. Sam asked, hey, what's a goon squad? And I went off on a tangent <laughs> telling you my whole life story. That's what we all do, so <laughs> it's all right. Asked, Sir, what's a goon squad? Right. right what is the right. goon squad? And, um, you know, going through this whole ecosystem of Apex is kind of what I was leading to. And doing the work... You just like you and Brian have gotten together here. You guys obviously have some kind of bond. There's some some. No, you just won't let me leave, dude. <laughs> won't let me leave. I believe that. <laughs> so I found I found the same thing with a group of, of five other individuals, right? And we wound up setting up uh, a couple of impromptu in-person get-togethers, uh, and then it became a Facebook group. And then one day in that Facebook, this is, I'm talking about Facebook or more of a, a Facebook chat, a DM chat. Mm -hmm. And we, we just decided one day to call it, we, we said, yeah, we're acting like a bunch of goons. And all of a sudden, boom, goon squad's born, right? Uh, Jessica, going back to Jessica Dennehy, Brian, we get her in. What we were doing at the time, we haven't done this in a, in a while, was we would invite one Apex executive member into that group for a 30-day stint with us. And we would literally hold that person accountable for 30 days. Mm. Okay, so, so pretty much take the top Apex executive coaches in our program and you're getting your ass chewed out by them and praised by them for 30 days straight if need be. So Jessica comes into that, um, that ecosystem with us for those 30 days. And we had this idea to throw an event. I was like, well, Knowing what we know about business, if we're going to throw the event, we should probably structure an LLC and do this the right way. And boom, all of a sudden, now you have a business. And we put this LLC together. And this event that's coming up now, which is going to be February 3rd, um, we actually JV, we partnered with Break Free Academy and Ryan Stuman, which, yes, I do have interest over there too, right? But we put this together as a JV because the marketing muscle, the marketing machine of the apex ecosystem is much greater than the goon squad ecosystem in and of itself right, right. and yeah. it's beneficial for both uh the goon squad as it is for ryan stewman break free academy apex and all those um entities and whatnot so we partnered up put this thing together and now we've got this badass event kicking off february 3rd it's apex live and it's called the goon squad edition so instead of it being the typical um Ryan's going to invite some of his high-powered influencer-style friends in to speak. It's going to be us who are already in the Apex community, come in, speak, tell our stories, inspire people, uh, give them some tactical advice from the stage as well. And that's really what we're going to do. I mean, if you guys know anything about me, when I came in and started working on myself, that's when I kind of stumbled upon my purpose, and that's to help others succeed in business. And that's something that I hold... Uh, and share with the fellow Goon Squad members is we all believe in that at some some extent. Now, that may not be their exact mission and why they're here on the planet, but we all believe in that. It's a, it's a common value. So we're going to get up on that stage and basically pour into people as best we can. 
and make things happen. Maybe, maybe unlock that one thing, that one roadblock that's holding that person back. Give so, you that one idea that's going to make yeah. you uh, or enable you to make the first million or go from the first million to the first 10 million. I, I have a question. So there's, there's obviously some very distinct personalities make up that little group and you've all got, (laughs) (laughs) you've all got, you've all got your own specialties. So like, what could, what can we expect to, to be learning? Lots of stuff. I mean, uh, you know, there's not a person up there that's bad in sales. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's like kind of business 101. If you're going to succeed in business, get good at sales. I don't care what your title or position is. All right, and I think you guys could both agree Absolutely. with that as well. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Right. Um, but we have Drewby Wilson, who's probably the baddest closer I've ever met in my entire life, and he's the most unassuming closer you've ever met because he's not a, he's not someone who's going to hard pitch you. It's just mm-hmm. not the way he does things. Um, we've got guys like Brian McKittrick who will just dialed in and, can, and and teach you a process and explain it to you in a language that's easily understood by you. And Brian's great at building teams and training people. He's been doing it for years. You've got guys like Mike Claudio. I mean, beyond besides just being a complete savage gorilla, because he kind of is, yes. <laughs> um, he's a great human with, with a really good heart, but he's an intense person, and he's going to share with you and say, hey, this is why you do this. And if you don't believe Mike by the end of the day, he's probably going to yell at you. But that's <laughs> he's, actually, he's actually our guest for next week, so everyone's going to get a that's little good. preview of Mike. Mike so. Mike's, Mike's a great guy. He really is a dear friend of mine, too. Uh, you got Chris Whitehead. I mean, Chris has been in and out of small business for 30 plus years at this point. He's owned several successful and several uh, companies that have failed. I think that's the commonality, too, between everyone that's up there is we've actually we've we've failed. OK, a.k.a. lessons learned mm-hmm. several businesses, several interactions. We're not, we don't win everything we do because the person who comes up there and tells you, oh, I wanted everything I do. They're a bullshit artist, and you guys both know that. Well, that's the part about Apex that's so real is that it's not all you know rainbows and you know unicorns and stuff. It's this is this is life is hard and stuff happens and it happens to all of us. You're not alone in that journey, but there is you know people do win at this journey, and uh, if you surround yourself with those people, maybe you can short shortcut a couple steps to uh, that you messed up. You know that they messed up, they could teach you not to mess up, and that therefore that's why we hire coaches, right? So that we can try and compress some time and avoid those mistakes. <coughs> yeah, that's, that's the beauty of looking for a mentor or intentionally going out to hire a coach. And Brian, you just nailed it. You're literally compressing time. You're, you're taking the, the experiences that that person has gone through in their life on their journey to succeed at whatever it is. And you're saying, okay, cool. And this is rule number 101 if you're going to get into or looking for a coach, in my opinion. Has that coach achieved what I'm looking to personally achieve in life? Mm-hmm. And if they have, listen to everything that person has to say. Because they're, they're literally going to save years off of your progress from point A to point B. Yeah, I have the same thing. with uh, I do weekly team meetings with my real estate team. And I'm coaching them. And I see them doing the stuff that I was doing in the beginning. And I'm like, stop. I, I made those mistakes. I learned this lesson. I figured this out. Don't do that. Like, let me help you get past that. You know, and it, uh, you know, and you got to be open to, to learning that. Everyone thinks they can reinvent the wheel until they realize that, you know, why are we wasting so much time reinventing the wheel? It's already a wheel, you know? And uh, sometimes that people have to learn that for themselves and they have to crash and burn a little bit. But uh, once they crash and burn a little bit, they realize, hey, you know what? This person did it. Maybe I just should do what they do. You know, it's pretty simple. Yep. I think it's a pride thing for a lot of people. I've personally done it myself, you know, for yeah. years. Um, but realistically, there's nothing new on this planet. There's no new system. There's no way, no, no new way of doing things, even if you think it's new. Um, it's just not the case. So mm-hmm. my best advice to someone is go and copy and clone. Like find, find two or three people who do what you do. And go and pick apart the, th- the two or three pieces from each of those people that align with you as a human, and then go implement that as your process. Yeah, I mean, it's really, right? right in every Absolutely, process, right? Yeah. There's not that many steps. It's just rinse and repeat. Figure out the steps, well, figure out what works, rinse and repeat. Like, I mean, and it, and it carries really, from yeah. business to business. That's what we keep finding. The more different business people we talk to, you're right, sales is part of it, right? Whether you're selling 
to the public or whether you're selling your business to the employees. That's the other step that, you know, Apex brought in is that in order to retain employees and, and, and get employees, you have to sell your business to those employees, much like Sam's making videos for people showing mm -hmm. off their business to attract, yeah. you're selling your business to yeah. employees, potential employees. It's all about mm -hmm. sales when you think about it. You know, it's really what it comes down to. And then the processes that come into play to systematically make everything work. It's, uh, yes, sir. It's really basic. Now just stick into this basic steps because, again, we all have ADHD and we're all in 10 different places at once. And, you know, we corral that in. Well, <laughs> hmm? there's a squirrel. Sorry. Is that squirrel? Yeah. <laughs> you guys kill me. I, not, I had like I had totally valid yet. and relevant points, but Brian, Brian just skirted so far off topic. Um, I was going to talk about the books I'd been reading and the fact that you know you, you said nothing's nothing's changed. Um, there's only so many ways to do business. It's it's why I've been turning to uh, the richest man in Babylon, uh, Think and Grow Rich, um, reading um, How to Win Friends and Influence People right now, and it's like. All those lessons are, are between 70 and 100 years old now, and they're still completely relevant. It, it, it's great to explore that. Yeah, I agree. You know, let me, let me, let me give you a, a piece here from Think and Grow Rich. Uh, the piece of that book that, that hit me the hardest, and I've been able to leverage this myself over, just over and over again. There's a, a, a part of that book where he talks about, you come up with this great idea. Mm -hmm. And you then go and you basically tell your boss, significant other, leader, hey, this is the idea that I came up with. And that person goes, yeah, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, with this type of individual, you can't present it as if it's your idea. What you have to do is, and this is a long-term play, doesn't happen immediately. You have to be a patient son of a bitch. You have to plant the seeds and present the idea to them and make them believe that the idea came up from their own brain. And if they do come up with it and think that they came up with it, it's the best thing since sliced bread. And all of a sudden, oh, man, Tom, I had this great idea last week. We should go get this done. Meanwhile, you've already got the whole back end in place ready for it to take, <laughs> take action. Yeah, yeah. Now, hopefully yeah. Ryan Stuman doesn't hear this because he's going to know all my secrets to success with him. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I mean, there's so many personality types, and it's got to be their idea. And as long as it's their idea, you can run with it. But if it's not their idea, it could be the you know it could be the best thing since sliced bread. But not their idea. So once you realize that, you sure. backdoor into it. You know, that's it. Getting outside yeah. the box. You know, you know, we talk about the lot. A lot of times we only look at the direct path. Sometimes you know, sometimes you got to go around the back, and you know circle back and take it from a different direction to make it happen. And that's stuff like that, that, you know, all right, it's not working straight in. Let's try and, you know, let's go down the block and make a U-turn and come back that way and see if it works that way. And it, a lot of times that does, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and just uh, agree. not getting frustrated and just not giving up and just keep staying on your goal. Yeah, for sure. So Sam, I want to, I want to circle back to books for a second, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you made a comment, and I agree with you. Uh, the classic books that are written uh, ages ago, there's no new material for the most part. However, it doesn't mean that somebody shouldn't go out there and make their own content or regurgitate the content in their own voice. Oh, absolutely not. No, right. not at all. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not saying that you disagree with that. Um, <laughs> no, I just find it, I just find it empty, like... To read it in the old language, the way that the, the guy in the 1930s wrote the letter to the editor of the newspaper and to read that and to understand that throughout history, we're still, you know, we've evolved, but we're still a, a very similar people. Mm -hmm. And I, I just find it fascinating. No, I, I, man, I've got a plethora of new books. I'm embarrassed to show you my coffee table because uh, I don't actually have a bookshelf. So. <laughs> There's books so, everywhere. You see the bookshelf behind me here? Mm -hmm. there's this stack of books right here that's sideways those are my books to read list everything else okay then i don't feel so bad then because mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> i got a pile behind me here too but <laughs> i i have an embarrassment of riches when it comes to books that i have yet to read like and, and i go through i go through probably one a week and mm -hmm. they just i buy them faster than i read them unfortunately so yeah it's, oh. it's not a bad habit to have i don't think 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> Thomas, tell the audience about uh, your books. Yeah, you, you know a thing about books, don't you? Yeah, um, I've got two currently. Uh, the second one that just came out last week, I co-authored. I'll dive into that in a minute. And I'm actually working on the, the third right now. Um, I'm hoping to have it out. It's about 50% done. Let's just call it that. Realistically speaking, it'll probably be out quarter two of this year. Uh, an exact quick. date of, of when in quarter two. I'm not going to put that date yet, to be honest with you, but I know it's going to be out and, and, and functional at that point. $1 million um, mastermind? Yeah, quite possible. $1 million dollar mastermind is going to be in June this year. It's going to be a two-day event. It's actually going to be a Friday and Saturday. Uh, and I'll, I'll sidetrack here real quick before we dive into books. If you thought last year's million dollar mastermind was something cool, <laughs> you guys are in for a treat this year. Um, I can't tell you the venue that we booked yet, but the venue that we booked holds up to 7,000 people. Ooh. Okay. If some of the um, guest speakers who are on our list uh, agree to coming in and speaking slash performing, we're going to sell out that entire venue. And we will be there. Yeah. I'm really excited about it. So yeah. I'll go back to books. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to books, um, you know, I came into the Apex ecosystem. I started doing the work uh, and I realized that a lot of people in this community are published authors. And this is not to put anybody down, right? But I say to myself, I'm like, hey, so-and-so is not anything special. Neither am I, by the way, but this person's not anything special. And they have one, two, three, four books that are out published written. Why can't I do it? And uh, that gave me the confidence seeing other people in the Apex community who had written books, gave me the confidence to go out there and, and, and just pursue it a little bit further. Started asking some questions. And I, I wound up asking the question, I wound up getting hooked up with one of the editors that, that's in our community. I got on a phone call with her and she gave me the game plan of exactly what was needed to write the book. I said, all right, cool, well, let's do it. And she's like, well, this is what it's gonna cost. Okay. And now you've got two options. You can go there and you can do it all yourself, the hard, hard old way, you know, thick headed way. Or in my opinion, the editor is a coach. Okay. Going back to what we said before, Brian, yep. the coach helps you compress time because they know all the idiosyncrasies. They know all the, 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 the loops and loopholes and jump shit. You can jump over kind of to get things happen, make, make things happen faster. Fuck. <clears throat> <I'm> tired. <laughs> so, um, I wound up hiring the editor. We get the first book done in June of 2019. Um, and that book went on to become a number one bestseller around July of that year. I, I botched the initial launch of that book and that's why it didn't become a bestseller initially. Um, but that book went on right there. And what happened was, this is the whole game plan of writing a book, by the way, is I went out there and I promoted it, promoted it well, and it established me as the, as the authority in a couple of different communities, the 12 volt mobile electronics community, the GPS tracking community, which is a, a, a section of that, and also the Apex ecosystem, right? Uh, it got me noticed by other people. It wound up, here's, you don't make money on the book, by the way, you make money <laughs> from the connections that you make from the book, right? right? So that, that wound up kicking down doors. It wound up awarding us contracts in my GPS company. Um, all sorts of cool things started to happen. Uh, uh, more doors open than I could have ever imagined because I basically said one day, hey, I want to write a book. And I had the, the wherewithal to see it through, see the project to the end. It's actually become um, the staple so, of the Apex community now. I mean, literally, like, yeah. your book is, like, part of the coursework, you know? Yep. Yeah, it really is. You know, my first book dives in heavily into core values, which is something that I, I thoroughly, thoroughly believe in, even to this very day. Uh, it's the basis of, of um, the structure that we run Break Free Academy and Apex with. And you guys are fully aware of that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's something that I know both of you guys have implemented into your lives as well. And it's, you know, you live and die by that shit. It's, it's not a joke. This is serious. This is, this is how things get better. Mm -hmm. You know, in my opinion, core values are that one, is that one layer of structure that most businesses fail to implement. And if you fail to implement that, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like building a shitty foundation in, in a home. 
If you have a shitty foundation, never heard of them. Yeah. right? You know? Yeah, right. Like you have a shitty foundation, you can only build so much. You can only scale so much before that thing comes crumbling down. Absolutely. So that was book one. Um, and the the day that I finished that book and it actually went live on uh, KDP on Amazon, uh, my editors reached out to me and said, "You need to write book number two like now." And I looked at them both and I said. Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> I was I was just done and burnt out with the process. You have so much free um, time on your hands, you know. Yeah, I know so much free time. Um, but so book number two came about. It was a partnership. We co-authored it with. Uh, I was one of seven authors. Uh, the process here was much easier because we each picked up a handful of chapters. I picked up two chapters, and I wrote two chapters. Writing is like anything else you do in life, right? Like, for instance, you guys are both in real estate. The first house that you sold was a complete clusterfuck. I guarantee it, right? You probably had some some shit not go right. It wasn't the smoothest transaction, right? Same thing, you know, in, in any new job or, or new task that we take on. We're just not great at it at first. But the more reps that you get in, the better you are. So right. I wrote this book in 20, it launched in 2019. So realistically, I started writing that book in 2018, Right. So from 2018, I've been writing almost at a professional level. Okay. June of 2019, it officially becomes professional. I've continued to write Facebook and Instagram posts and blog posts and articles since then. I haven't stopped. You you go to my website, there's probably, I don't know, 100, 150 blogs. You guys follow me on Facebook and Instagram. There's a post up there damn near every day and sometimes multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. Right. There, there's magazine articles that I've written in between all that stuff, too. Um, so that experience starts to compound upon itself. So now when opportunity number two comes along, and I got to crank out two chapters for a book that I'm co-authoring. No problem. Boom. They're kicked out and done. Right. Same thing here with, with, with the third book that's coming out this year. I know the process now. And me being a process guy. I look at the process. I say, okay, here, here's where we are. Here's the end result. And now to get from point A to point B, I know how to do that better now since I've done it before. So I cut out all the bullshit and the fluff in between and I streamline the process. Makes so, sense. Yeah. To get to the, so I, I tell you guys now, I'm at the 50% mark of writing this book. Uh, essentially, you know, Drewby Wilson, he, he agrees to this as well. He's on book number two right now, too, in the background. Um, when you hand in your manuscript, right, right, when you give the raw content to the editor, that's the 50% mark. So at this point, I've handed in all that raw content to the editor, and it's, it's the editor and, and the editor's team's job right now to go in there and put some structure to it, clean it up, make sure the story flows correctly before they give it back to me, and then I put my final touches on it and make it sound like Tom. Mm. The process is. See, I'm looking forward. Oh, so go ahead. Now speaking to uh, speaking to text and all that other stuff that uh, you know everyone's using, to, it, it, the process is a little bit simpler than it would have been just to sit there and write and write and write. You can actually speak it and translate it and down to you know your manuscript there, and then the editor will, will deal with that, which helps helps a lot. I mean, even my book that I'm mm-hmm. writing right now, a lot of my content is from my daily messages, and she, you know Hillary's pony. Mm-hmm you know, pulling the transcripts off of the messages. Um, yeah. So I talk about a lot in these, you know, these messages. So she's like, why rewrite it? You already, you already wrote it. Just, we're going to put it in a book, you know? So uh, mm-hmm. that's kind of neat that uh, basically my book writes itself every day. Um, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's yeah. true. You know, it's the way it works. You get to repurpose that content. And is, this is one thing that, that Ryan's done, and I'm not giving away any trade secrets here. The man has written so many damn blog posts over the course of, you know, 12 years of doing it, that Hillary, who was also his editor for quite quite some time, she went back in and she grabbed a, a bunch of those blog posts and turned them into one of his books. So if you keep putting that content out there, that content machine, you can repurpose it. Don't just think it's there and it's there for that purpose and only that purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm having my Friday fires transcribed right now. I don't know how far wrong they are. Um, they've been doing it for about uh, a week. And that should give me enough content for my book. Um, my uh, my Zoom with Hillary is scheduled for later in the month. So I like it. Yeah, 
We had her on here uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, yeah, she yeah. went over the uh, book writing process and everything. And uh, she's all you said. She's you think editor, you just think someone that's helping you with a book. She's she's awesome. You know, obviously you know her. Um, she's a coach. Mm -hmm. You know, she's more than just book coach, life coach. We chat for hours on the phone. You know, at times and about everything, about what we're doing in a book, what we're doing in life, where our, where our heads are going. It's just these people that want to give and give and give. This apex community we keep talking about, like. Anyone that you touch in this community, it's just they just are an open book and want to give to you and want to pull you along for the journey. I mean, it's like we say it all the time, and until you actually go to an event and you experience what the room feels like, uh, it's really hard. Everyone thinks we're uh, yeah, they're talking about this again, but <laughs> until you experience it live, so I tell everyone, here's an opportunity here. You're getting to meet Thomas, you met Chris last week, we're gonna have Claudio on uh, the week after that, and I think we got Mark coming on the last week before. And uh, you guys all get a taste of just some of the caliber of people that are going to be in that room. And uh, I said, I, I suggest you come to this event because uh, that one and a million dollar mastermind. From what it, if last year was good, last year blew my mind. And this is going to be double of last year. I mean, that's it's going to be a wild event. And I think everyone needs to, you know, get out of their comfort zones and book that plane and let's go. Because uh, I never would have done it, honestly. And Jess is on here commenting. Uh, that she created monsters, you know. So, uh, <laughs> um, so uh, if Jess never basically said you're coming, um, I never would have got out of my comfort zone. I never would have jumped on a plane. I never would have left. And we're all so busy in our daily lives and in the grind and just doing the same. That's that Groundhog Day experience where every day's the same and you're running in that hamster wheel and you're not getting anywhere. Um, there's so many people I talk to that when I say that out loud, they're like, "Wow, that's me." And I'm like, "Well, then get your butt on a plane and come check this out." Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> when I was Sorry, coming down here from, from, uh, from New York, sir, it was like, that was the reset time. Like, I yearned to come back down here because this is where I came down. I was like, oh, the people in this room understand me. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not this, this alien, this outsider here who thinks weird, yeah. right? Yeah. Just because yeah. I want more doesn't mean that, that I'm a bad person. Whereas exactly you know, people in my is. hometown... My family, uh, friends, you know, people that you've, you've grown up with, they're like, hey, man, how can you be so freaking weird? You keep wanting to work all these long hours and you want more and you want this and you want that. Like, aren't you satisfied with what you have already? No, motherfucker, I'm not satisfied. And yeah, am I weird for that? Sure I am. If you want to call me weird, cool. But inside the Apex ecosystem is where I found like-minded individuals who think like I think. Aliens. I, I know both of you. You guys have dreams and aspirations mm -hmm. that make most people want to probably shit their pants. <laughs> you know, like Sam, you got something going on right now that 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 came into your life that's about to happen. <laughs> a year ago, you would have never even thought of, thought possible yeah. for yourself. You're correct. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I mean, like, that's the kind of stuff. That's the power of this community. When I when I spent the three thousand dollars to initially join Apex in uh, in May of 2018. Never in a million years did I think three years later that I'd be sitting next to Ryan Stuman at the head of that organization running the show. It's wild. It's incredible. It's incredible. Anything's possible. But in the like, you know, when I, when I joined, it was, <clears throat> I couldn't afford a three grand. I had to find a credit card with enough room on it to run for $1,000 and then wonder how the fuck I was going to pay for it next month. Like, you know, it, uh, it wasn't easy for me. And now I, I make the executives fee and it's it's just part of doing business. Mm -hmm. It's not a worry, you know? Yeah. And that's that's in under two years. It's true. Similar for me. You know, um, I, I joined, it was $3,000. It's funny. This is back in the day. I actually, Ryan actually sold me and, and took my money, which that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> we got so many damn people in the <laughs> community. Um, but I spent the $3,000 to join. And uh, a couple months later, I had seen so much growth in ROI from that initial $3,000 investment that he put another offer out there. And the offer was, hey, come fly in a private jet with me. We're going to go from uh, Florida to the Bahamas on a one-day mastermind. And I think at the time, it was five grand. It's like, all right, well, I made some money back here. Things are going good. The business is doing great. Uh, I can easily afford five grand. So I paid for that trip. I went on that one day mastermind and Ryan outlined the next 12 months of my life, of my professional career. Hey, this is exactly what you need to do. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Part of it was writing the book. Part of it was start the Facebook group. Part of it was speak from stage. 
part of it was start helping other other individuals in the GPS tracking installation space, which actually led me into coaching, by the way. Uh, and that wasn't the plan. Um, so I start doing all this. And again, I start seeing success in all of these areas of the things he's telling me to do. So he hits me up a couple weeks later. And he's like, hey, I really like working with you. And I'm, I really don't think he was just trying to sell me. Okay, because that's just not, like, yeah, Ryan likes to sell shit and make money. But if he doesn't want to work with you or doesn't like you, he's going to fucking tell you, right? He hits me up and he's like, hey, I think you got something good going on. And I really, truly believe that I can help you do it and do it really well. And that's when he hit me up and he's like, I want you to come into my top tier program and work directly with me for a year. And Sam, that's when I said, oh, fuck, I can't afford that. <laughs> yeah. Right? And yeah. Um, at the time, I think it was, uh, it was 35 grand for the year. And um, I said, like, man, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to pay for this, but something told me inside that this was the right thing to do. And uh, I, pull, I, had a, I, have a, uh, I still have it. I got a Delta Platinum Amex. And I, I pulled out that credit card. I filled out that link and I started sweating. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> the first payment went through, but I have no idea where that second month is coming from. Yep. Right. Yep. And <laughs> so what that did, and, and you know, I some people operate this way really well. I'm one of them. You put my back against the wall or put me in a corner, and you only give me one option and an option to succeed to succeed, otherwise I'm gonna die, then I'm going to fucking win. Right. And that's 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 what I did to myself when I when I signed up on that form and, and spent that money. Now, I'm not giving that as advice to anybody to do that. OK, so don't take it the wrong way. I know it works for me. You do you. Right. But that's what I did. And that forced me to say, oh, shit, if I don't take action on what I just committed to here, a, am not going to get a return on my investment. I'm not going to achieve the goals that I have for myself as a person, which are pretty fucking lofty at this point. Mm -hmm. And worst thing here, and, and both of you guys can understand this as, as, as fellow parents, I'm going to fuck, not in a good way, I'm going to fuck my wife because she's going to basically be left holding the bag here. Um, mm -hmm. And I've got three kids at home that I need to worry about. Right? So this has got to work. If it doesn't work, I'm literally putting my family at harm. True. So if that right there doesn't drive you and inspire you to actually take action and get off your ass, I don't know what does. Yeah, that's it right there. You know, same when when uh, you said you join in a what? A million dollar mastermind. I said, all right, we're doing this. Same thing. I had my credit card shut off, honestly, because I just I was working on a cash basis. And I was like, well, let's, let's turn on one of the credit cards again. Start getting those those mileage, those points and uh, threw it on the car. And honestly, I did double the business this year. <laughs> That I did last year in real estate. Now, was it mm -hmm. Apex? I mean, I I think so because my whole mind's different. I only started in May. I mean, I barely was just getting dug in. Um, yeah. you know, systems, processes, just mindset in general. Just 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 being a good human and, and attracting people to you. I mean, shit. We do this show. I mean, live on Facebook. I never thought I'd be doing basically TV shows. I mean, this is basically a TV <laughs> show that we're doing. You know, and uh, and a lot of value to people. Uh, and then me and Sam came up with this idea. It's uh. It was like 16 episodes now or something we've done uh sitting in uh what was it twin peaks in the uh in the cigar lounge and we said no what else? one of those one of those places no we, we were never in, we were never in twin peaks no oh. never smoking a cigar brian not us we're, we're good lads so uh, i took him to twin peaks yeah <laughs> i'm a better friend yeah <laughs> I was like, i'm moving here this is great so uh but um mm -hmm. yeah but uh actually it was the night we connected we all had dinner that night uh, over at yeah. Arthur's, and me and him peeled off, and then you went home, and uh, we peeled off, and went uh, and smoked cigars, and we said, "Yo, we should do something together," and that's where this all started. You know, it's, that's no, he won't let me leave now. No, he's not allowed no. to leave. He keeps trying to leave, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now, now we got we got our fire squad. We're calling it. You know, they <laughs> get some fire. Fire starts fire. You know, it's all about the fire. Brian made the name up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we going next? So what's next? What's what's in store, being that you're the kind of guy in the know, what are we going to see in Apex that you can share with us this year that's going to be different than last year? 
much better events. Um, uh, we're actually building in the background now a much more organized and a better event platform. So, uh, for instance, we've got Apex Entrepreneurs Meetup coming up this week, Brian, which I assume you're coming to. We'll be there Wednesday. Good. I'll be so, there. So, yep, excellent. Uh, and and um, Sam, you'll you'll see more of this too as well, even on the executive side, because both of you guys are currently in different levels of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're we're building out a really badass event website. Uh, so it, it's events.breakfreeacademy.com. If anyone wants to go check it out, it currently is live right now. Uh, I believe there's only two or three events that are currently live on the site. We're building out each event for the year and hosting them on that website. So if somebody wants to go in and say, hey, well, what events do you have coming up in the month of March or the month of April? Like well, mm -hmm. go to the event website. Here's a whole list of everything. If you want to buy tickets six months in advance, fine by me. Um, so we're trying to get all of that content in, together in that one place and just give a better user experience. Uh, you guys are going to see some more interaction and, and um, I'll just flat up full transparency here. You're going to see some more interaction and automation even when you come to the events with our event campaigns. Hey, by the way, guys, don't forget RSVP for your ticket. Here's the link to sign up. Once you do sign up, hey, here's your ticket to get into the event. Uh, you know, a couple of emails and text messages in between. If you have any questions, this is the person you reach out to. Oh, here's a text message with a link that goes out to the itinerary for the event. This is all stuff that we were lacking on in the past, not because no one cared. We had so much damn stuff going on and the team was small. Mm -hmm. So the better we get at events, the more people I'm able to put on the team, the better we can dial in all these processes. And also the cool thing is, the further out in the year we can build everything, mm. right? We, we were running with such a lean team in the past that I could only go out a month in advance from all the stuff we had going on because we didn't have the people. And the, the oh, growth yeah. that you guys are seeing, I mean, what, how much, what percentage did uh, the break free grow over the last year? I mean, it had to double. Right? Yeah, so here are the stats, okay? I don't share numbers, but I'll share percentages, okay? Um, I started at BFA November 1st of 2020. Okay, this November, uh, obviously, was a year that just passed, and I screenshot it that day. We had a 229% growth in 12 months. That's it. incredible. That's it. Yeah. And listen, I'm not taking credit for it. Like, did some of the stuff that I implement help? Sure, it did. But my team, uh, those are the people who went out there and really did the work and made it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just helped them dial in and streamline some shit. I took an existing company that was doing great and very successful and said, guys, this is where the low hanging fruit is. Stop wasting time over here and focus on this because this is where we're going to make the money. And it's exponential growth. It's similar to the company I mean, Sam work for EXP Realty. The more agents that join, the more salespeople that are selling the company that are attracting more people to the company. To the, so me and Sam here are basically doing a commercial for Apex tonight unintentionally. <laughs> and, um, but obviously, that's what happens well, because when you believe well, in something, that it works. you know, it works. You know? And, it's, and like I said, the relationships, I mean, I got, I got friends, you know, across the country that like, you know, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Like, you know, I never talked to anyone outside of our little Franklin Square <laughs> car world, you know, it's like, and now I got friends across the country that I bounce ideas off of and check in with and, you know, lean on and, and talk about business ideas with. And it, I mean, it's just wild. It really is. And then. Um, like I said, everyone just offers so many ideas out there. They're like, hey, why do you do it like that? You ever think about doing it like this? And you're like, good idea. Like, you know, and I take that back and I implement it and, and vice versa. I'm looking at someone's business yeah. going, hey, why do you do it like that? You know, you ever think about doing it like this? And, uh, mm -hmm. and that go, those conversations go on. I, we always say sometimes I think more of the value of Apex is the community. We go to these events and we're going to get there Wednesday afternoon. We're probably going to have lunch with someone. We'll have dinner with someone Wednesday night. Um, probably have probably meet someone for breakfast uh, Thursday morning. We'll hang out all day. We're gonna hang out. We'll learn all day, um, and then Thursday night we're gonna go out for another dinner. And same thing Friday. Friday night another dinner. Saturday we're flying out. Saturday Saturday probably breakfast lunch someone. And every time we have those meetings, um, and again we be getting more intentional with it um, with our smaller dinner groups because when I first started going there and we talk about this, you know you got so many initial things and just getting to know people and there's forty people in the room and. 
Honestly, some people are going there to party. I guess it's freedom or whatever. And listen, I'm paying too much money to go to a party. Listen, we'll have some fun, but I, I want to meet people. I want to learn from each other. I want to grow from each other. So we've been kind of trying to dial in these dinners and whatnot with smaller handfuls of people. And, you know, we really get to know each other. Really, And except really that's how me and Sam met was for the dinner that, that we had together. I think with Greg we were with that night. And, um, you know, it was just really get to know each other on a, on a deeper level and really learn each other's business and lives and, and struggles. Um, that's when we all get vulnerable and talk about the stuff we're dealing with our lives. And you realize that, you know, listen, we're all the same. It really is wild. When you think you're alone on an island, man, there's a whole bunch of islands sitting there right next to you with people on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. It's, uh, I've never had that analogy before. But you know, yeah. at times in your life when you're going through shit and you just think, wow, why me? And, and that was the other thing we've talked about, the mindset change. Like, all those shitty times, um, it was my message the other day, you know, you got to put horse manure on a, on a field to make the flowers grow, make the produce grow, and that, that, that shitty stuff is what makes stuff grow. Um, kind of a little analogy there. Um, if you look at everything that comes at you in the shitty times, that's the stuff that's teaching you to grow. That's getting you out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, all those struggles that you have in your life, don't look at them as why me, look at them as what is this teaching me? And as soon as you think about something bad as what is this teaching me? What am I going to do better next time? How am I going to prevent this next time? What am I going to do? And honestly, it doesn't upset you anymore. It almost gives you a mission now where you're like, all right, that happened and we're going to do this next time. And we're going to get better from this. And we're going to, whatever you know, the lesson is, um, it really changes your whole mindset. It really takes you at a point where it might have knocked you into depression. Now it throws you into something where you might have meant like, wow, this is a mission. Like, to be better, um, be the best versions of ourselves. And I use your line a lot, small steps forward daily. Um, honestly, every day, 1% better, right? And before you know it, you're 365% better in the course of a year. And I'm definitely a different person in, I think it's eight months now, I think I'm in Apex and I'm literally a different person. Uh, the way yeah, I what does that look like two years from now? Seriously. It's just, you know, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. You know, um, you said a lot of important stuff there, Brian, you really did. You know, uh, what, what are the, the best things that I learned a couple of years back and, and I learned this from reading, right? And then you come into Apex and, and that thought is solidified is nothing happens to you, it happens for you. Mm -hmm. And once you start believing that and once you start taking extreme ownership of everything that's in your life and you start saying, hey, everything good, bad or indifferent that's currently in my, li in my life is my own fucking fault. Once you start believing at that level, that's when shit starts to get good because you take responsibility for everything. And now since you own it and you take responsibility for it, that then gives you the authority to yourself, right? Make, this is a mindset shift here. It gives you the authority to go in there and make the necessary changes. Because guess what? If you're the responsible one, if you're the owner of that issue or that good thing, now you have the authority to go make, take action and make changes if need be. Couldn't agree more. It's just literally, it's just you're taking your life and looking at it from the left side instead of the right side, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the same stuff, and you look back at those lessons that they teach you. And, um, and it's funny, um, so many people I talk to that are going through stuff, and I'm like, oh, wait, stop, stop, stop. They're upset. What'd you learn from this? Oh, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do that, I shouldn't do that. Okay, so that's why this happened. So you're going to go forward, you're not going to do that anymore. You're going to plan for this in the future, right? Yeah, I was like, so that's better than saying, why me, right? Yeah. And it just changed their whole perspective. And then they're like, all right, let's go get it. Let's, let's get some fire now. Like, so it takes the, uh, the, the coals and turns them into fire again and uh, spins them back around and sends them back out into the world on, you know, on fire where he said, it's real easy. You know, a lot of people suffer from depression, from things going on in their life. And, you know, like I said, as we get more vulnerable stuff, you know, bad stuff's happened, divorces and businesses failing and health issues and all this other stuff. And people get depressed over that. And if you, can look at it from what's this teaching me, you know, why is this happening to me and what's it trying to teach me? If you want to say it's from God or from the universe or whatever, what's the universe trying to teach me from this situation and how can I grow from this rather than how can I sit here and cry from this? It really changes it, really changes your whole life. It really, and it's important to stop and be present in the moment. We talk about it all the time. I'm so busy, so busy, so busy and stuff waxing this, you know, you get hit in the head with a two by four and it's like, I didn't see that coming. And you lay on the ground and it's like, oh, no, wait a minute. All right, you know, maybe I should slow down and, and look where, I, you know, look where this is coming from. You know, maybe I'm going too fast. Maybe I'm not thinking stuff through. Maybe I'm on autopilot, groundhog day, hamster in a wheel. 
Uh, maybe I need to be present in a moment. You know, maybe I need to put my phone down. Maybe I need to pay attention more. Maybe I need to get off Facebook. You know, maybe I need to pay more attention to the kids. Maybe I need more pay more attention to my spouse. You know, maybe I need to slow down a little bit from this grind. We talk about this grind. The grind isn't always what it's cracked up to be. You know, we've kind of learned that too. I mean, some people thrive on saying, oh, I work 20 hours out of the day. Well, you know what? It's not meant to be that way, you know? Working smart and not hard, um, you know, put your systems in place like you talk about all the time. Um, you shouldn't have to work 20 hours a day to get the job done. You know, you, you're not doing the right job if you're working 20 hours. and Or you're doing a $10 an hour test that you should have the, the assistant doing um, so that you can spend time with the kids and, and be present with the kids. And something I really concentrate on is just putting my phone down when I'm with the kids. I mean, I know we're all guilty of it. Like, and I look back and honestly, it, it makes me sad that I think about how many nights I'm there and the kids are tugging on you like, yeah, yeah, one more email, one more text, one more phone call. Put the phone down. My big advice to all the dads and moms out there. Don't just be, be present when you're around the kids. Do your best. I know it's hard. Sometimes stuff comes up, but uh, that, that's one of the big lessons. That, and I've learned that from you, Thomas, and from Mike Claudio and from all these other guys that talk about this stuff. What? hey, you're an asshole. Put your phone down. Those kids are growing. You know, the kids are growing and they're looking up to you and they're tugging on your leg and you're on a stupid phone call that could have happened tomorrow, that could have happened later tonight, that could have, you know, happened in an email later on. Um, and uh, something I've been working on myself. And since I've been working on that, my relationship with my family has gotten a hundred times better. Um, just because I'm present with them, you know, they're, they're looking for me now. My, my daughter came up and hugged me the other night and said, Daddy, thank you for being around and being present when you're here. Like, thank you for, you know, being here with us and, and contributing. And I was like, wow, wow. Like, I was that far out of it and they were missing me. And now I'm back and, and they're realizing it. Like, it's powerful stuff. And that's stuff that, you know, we try and bring these messages out to the world. And we talk about this at our dinner groups and stuff like that. That How important it is that Apex is, is about business, yeah. But honestly, I found the more benefit that I've gotten out of Apex is the mindset of that, of life. Life, Apex lifestyle, represent what winning looks like. And that's not even the business side. That's picking up, like I said, picking up the garbage, pushing in your chair, putting the shopping cart back, holding the door for someone. All those things in life that make you a good human and make us change the world, um, I think we have the power to change the world. Um, it's the number one catfish that happens, right? It's like uh, people people come into Apex and they expect to get learn the, this, this sales and marketing system that we have. They, they want to learn more about, you know, building a funnel and what landing pages are. Yes, all that shit's in there. It really is. But what most people don't understand or expect is like what you just said, Brian, all of that shit's back there too. All of the training for you to become a better parent, a better human, better physically fit, better mentally strong, all that stuff's back there too. And without that shit in place, I don't care what the fuck you got as far as sales processes, marketing funnels, hiring processes, that shit doesn't mean a goddamn thing if this right here isn't fixed first. It doesn't mean 100%. shit. 100%. Yep, it's all, it's all up there, man. Yeah, back um, to the same and, old cliche, but money, money doesn't buy happiness, right? You could have you know, $100 million, but if you're not happy and your life sucks, your life sucks with $100 million. And uh, Ryan says all the time, money amplifies, right? So... If you're happy and you're in a good mindset, money will make you happier and help more people and, and bring that forward. If you're a shitty human and you get money, you're just a shitty human with money. money I don't know, bro. I could, buy, I, could buy, I could buy a lot of tears for $100 million, man. I'll just sit here and cry for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, I think all of us, and you know, we like to give, you know, so, you know, obviously, you know, the more stuff, the more financially successful we are, the more we can give back and help people around us, bring people up. Yep. Every time we start a business, right, we're helping how many people that are employed by that business and helping their, their wife and their kids and their families. And, you know, being a business owner is not just being a business owner. You are helping the world. You're helping the community. And being a good human as a boss or business owner and caring about your employees, um, you know, it goes a, goes a long way. I mean, my real estate team, I'm changing lives with, you know, some of my agents are, killing it and it's literally life-changing you know it's you know to get a couple thousand dollars every time they sell a house that they never had before and a lot mm -hmm. of times people are living paycheck to paycheck so when you get that chunk of cash that puts in the built-in pool that the kids wanted that puts in you know the new car that the family really needed that maybe <coughs> put the trip to disney that we couldn't afford you know that's it's lifestyle it's life-changing it really is and so by me teaching 
most of my team is brand new agents. By me teaching them how to do what I'm doing, it was life changing for me. And now I'm get to share that. I mean, it's awesome. It's awesome to just see people grow and see, you know, it's changing, changing the world, changing lives one person at a time. And in this world that's right. so messed up, right? It's up to us to change the world. And I think that's why Apex is growing at that same caliber is that people are really looking to be, to jump onto something, to be part of something greater than themselves. And I think that's what Apex provides, uh, you know, I think uh, in, a, in an age where basically everything's going to shit around us, you can go into that room and know that everyone there has your back. It's like, you know, really you get that feeling when you're in a room. Yeah. Yeah, 100%, man. It really is. It's a great community. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to be here. Uh, proud at this point, you know, to be one of the, the leaders in the ecosystem as well. And um, it's something that that has literally not figurative, it literally changed my life. Um, from my physical appearance to my mindset to my finances to the relationship with my wife and my kids. Um, you guys clearly know too, we, we touched on this as well, but I, I don't live in the same damn state anymore. And mm -hmm. you know, it's funny, yeah, people no, assume good, quite yeah. often. Yeah, <laughs> people assume all the time that I moved here just for Apex, and that wasn't the case. I moved here because Apex had opened up my mind and shown me the possibilities of what it's like to live in an area like North Dallas. And I came down here. Uh, I knew I was exiting my last company, started that whole process, started building another business while I was here. And it's funny how uh, proximity opens up other opportunities that you don't always expect. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. You know, Ryan knew I was coming down here. Him and I've got a great relationship we have for years. Uh, dude calls me up one day and is like, yo, I know you're in town. Why don't you come along and build some epic shit with me? And it was like, well, shit, what the hell do I do? I just invested 30 grand into this new startup company I got going on here, building systems, processes, investing in software, new website, blah, 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 all this crap. And then the opportunity of a lifetime comes along, right? And that's, that's I, I talk about this often, but that's where core values come into play. And that's where knowing your mission in life comes into play. Because I had two paths I could have gone down, right? I'm at the fork in the road. Do I go and, and team up with Ryan and go conquer the world? Or do I go about this and, and try it myself? It's a no-brainer. Uh, and look, trust look me. at the results now. How, how, many, how many entrepreneurs would you have put through Step It Up Academy in the last year and a half? Realistically, I had 24 people on my target. Okay. Now, with that 24 people, I would have made very, very good money. No doubt. However. That's however, not your mission. What's your mission? Correct. There my you go, mission see. is to help people succeed in business. Okay. So by, by teaming up with Ryan, I'm able to impact more people with my mission. Mm -hmm. That's why it was the right choice. And guess what happened, Sam? What? The money followed because I made the right choice. Absolutely. Right. So I didn't go there for the money. However, by doing the work required and helping the right people, the right mm -hmm. money came in behind it. Yeah. Because, you know, money is the uh, it's, money's the outcome, never the objective. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting here tonight because of that decision, because I never would have went down there for step it up and me and Sam never would have connected. So here we go. Look at the, look at the, what those decisions make, <laughs> right? The, the, the ripple effect of uh, these decisions. And that's actually anyone that, that, that hasn't met Ryan and this does this all the time. Um, Ryan's most one of the most stand up realist dudes there is. Um, Luck, I was able to meet Ryan earlier in the game, obviously through my connection to Thomas. And this guy is just like, I'm here. I am some Joe Schmo from New York, which, you know, down south, they don't really like Yankees as much because they think we're all a bunch of <laughs> crazies. But, um, you know, we're not in New York City. We're outside of New York City. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, I've talked to Ryan like straight up one on one, just the coolest dude you'll meet. So real, just, you know, doesn't talk down to you. You think someone like that, like, I'm in charge of the show. I'm, I'm the, you know, the, the head cheese here and you know you're just kind of like appealing he talks to you like a brother and like you know how can i help you and and how can i build you up and did you ever think about trying this did you ever think about doing that and just i mean i don't know uh, it's it's a whole different like world and i guess he sets the standard for everybody there because uh, a lot of times you talk to a multi-millionaire and i've come across them they talk down to you like they because they're like on another mm -hmm. level and i get it they're on another level like what they do for fun is like you know we can't even dream about but they talk down to the people around them. 
right? When you get around Ryan and even all the executives there that are very successful, they talk to you like you're like family. Like, like I don't care if you make twenty dollars. Like, but the, the difference is it's self-made, man. It's yeah, self-made. self-made. It's it people is. that have failed before they've succeeded. But, um, you know, it's people yeah. that have been broke felt that pain. It's uh, yeah. That's the big difference in Apex. Everybody wants to help. Yeah, I mean Ryan's story. What ten years ago he was in jail to give you an idea. Um, made some, I guess, dumb choices in life and ended up in jail and rebuilt himself into this amazing human in 10 years. So anything's possible. I know a lot of people go after him for that. And um, it actually happened recently when I promoted the uh, New York event. And uh, someone was going after him saying he was in jail, this and that and the other thing. And um, honestly, I appreciate him for that. He does, doesn't hide it. This is We made some dumb choices in life. And this is where, uh, you know, you run with the wrong crowd and this is where you get. And... And honestly, what he's done for so many people, uh, he embraced basically what we were just talking about. He embraced the shit in life because that's what makes you grow. If he had never gotten in jail, he never would have came up with his idea to do this. And um, yeah. it's really, uh, and he can relate to people on any level, which is pretty cool. You know? Yeah. I'll leave you guys with this for tonight. Um, one of the things that inspired me the most about Ryan is this, and not, not everyone knows this. I, I probably told both of you guys this in conversations because you and I, the, all of us in this call, we spent lots of time together outside of just Apex. I actually like you both, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so Ryan is literally seven days older than I am. We're both born in October 1979. I'm October 8th, he's October 1st, okay? Um, when I learned that, that inspired the fuck out of me because at the time when I learned it, this guy had 13 published books, 13, <laughs> not, not three, 13. Okay. Multiple seven figure plus businesses, you know, gorgeous wife, great family, um, amazing cars in the garage. Not that like that, that, that tangible shits, the, the end all be all, but what this guy had achieved inspired the shit out of me because I knew his backstory. Okay. Here I am. I'm middle-class America, Tom, right? Yeah. Did I come from a home that wasn't the best? Sure. I did. Cause my parents got divorced when I was four, but my mother did everything she possibly could to make sure that I was raised properly. Okay. She did everything. Brian, you've met her personally. You've been to her house. She's awesome. She's great people. Ryan, on the other hand, was dealt a real shitty set of cards growing up in life. Okay, adoption, you know, physical abuse, getting beat by his stepdad as a kid, uh, hanging out with the wrong crowd of kids, no one ever believing him because of his personality type. And that led down to the wrong path, wrong crowd, wrong shit happens, wound up in jail, not once, but twice. Okay, but that man has owned it. He's never hid any of that shit from the public whatsoever. You know, people, for, since, since I've been around that man, over the years, people have always been like, oh, but when are you going to tell people that you're a felon? I was like, who the fuck doesn't know that Ryan Stuman's a felon? Like, he's that <laughs> vocal and open about it. He tells people in his story. Right. right. So that's what really inspired me about him when I first met him and start learning more about him. I was like, hey, this guy's literally seven days older than me. He's literally been dragged through shit his entire life. And yet, I don't know how. He's fucking light years ahead of where I am in my personal development and, and professional career. Yeah. So if he can do it, what's my fucking excuse? Yep. FYE. <laughs> yeah. Where's yours, Brian? Yeah. Come on, Brian. <laughs> so I know what we're doing Wednesday night. Is that what we're doing? Going for tattoos? <laughs> yeah. A little peer pressure on Brian. And get a new tramp stamp for you. <laughs> <laughs> No, you got to get on your wrist, pal. You no, get I was talking wrist. about you, you know. Um, <laughs> no, but, um, and everything you see, so you, so you talk about character, right? I mean, Ryan, like, literally, like, and you tell me the stories, like, if he gets pissed off if you don't push your chair in. I mean, like, that's, like, just the, the, the character. Piece of garbage. I do, too, now. The story like, he was I, talking about, and it went down to the park, and the garbage can flipped over. <laughs> he was with his kids, and his kids knew that they were picking up the garbage. And this man doesn't need to pick up garbage in the park, but you know what? If he doesn't, no one's going to, you know. So No, Brian, we all need like. to pick up garbage in the park. Yeah, and like that's what I do. Like, and honestly, it's a conscious effort me now. Like, I'm walking through the parking lot, and there's like, you know, a soda bottle. I pick it up, and I throw it in the garbage can. Like, 
It's become my thing. Like, I fucking Ryan's well, watching me. Like, I got to make sure I pick up garbage. <laughs> you know, but, you know, I pushed it. You know, you finish the wagon <laughs> at uh, at Home Depot or whatever. And you're like, oh, the corral's all the way down there. Like, all right, I'll walk down there. Ryan's watching. <laughs> you know, all right. Uh, that's how we live our lives now. You know, represent winning looks like all the time. That that saying's always in my head, and and FYE's all in my head. And honestly, it's like talk about core values, right? I mean, there's there's some good ones right there. You know, it's what it is. You know, good stuff. It is. This is awesome. So but we also live by a calendar, and uh, I think we're a little bit over on time, time yeah, Brian. So we don't want to trespass yeah. anymore on Thomas. Um, I do want to thank him for coming and hanging out with awesome, us. Yeah. It's been a blast, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you have. Anything you want to add before we go, I need to know the name of your book and where everybody watching who hasn't bought it already can go buy it. Yeah, so two books. Uh, the first one's called Unfuck Your Business. Uh, best place to get it is either uh, head over to my website, thomaskeenan.com. It's Thomas with no H. Um, you can get that on Amazon as well if you want to search for it. You're best off just typing my name because Amazon is not a fan of the title on fuck your business. So they kind of hide it. Uh, you can also go, I actually have, um, hold on. I'll show you the other book. I have it here. This is the latest book. I just got my own copies in, which I'll have at this week's event for a couple of people. So we've got startup legends. It's called startup legends handbook. Uh, this one's available on Amazon as well. Um, you can go to startuplegends.org and grab your copy there, uh, or just go and search it on the Amazons and you can get what you want. There's Kindle versions, there's paperback versions, uh, and the new cool new thing that just came out with KDP, uh, for the first time, they're starting to offer hardcovers. Um, mm. so in the next couple of weeks, we're going to work okay. on getting the hardcover version of that book uploaded to their, their platform and, and order a couple and see what the quality looks like before we tell the whole public about it. Well, that'd be awesome. I like that, yeah. Yeah. But an autograph copy. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thomas, awesome. thanks, man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing. And Goon Squad Live next month. When is it? February 3rd. Are We're we starting at 9 a.m. It's going to be in Addison, Texas. Um, if you guys want to drop in the in the in the the chat or whatever, I have a URL for it. It is apexgoons.com that brings you right over to the landing page it's got all the event information on there perfect awesome. all right brian get that up in the show notes mate yep yeah we'll yep. drop that in there and uh yeah i hope to see a bunch of those of you watching here i'm, I'm watching our uh a list here we should give a little shout out here chris is on here christine's on here michaela's on here wendy's on here uh, everybody's Caitlin, here everyone's here tonight who else is on here we got must be to see thomas because it's not yeah, for you bro for us when we have this elizabeth's <laughs> on here <laughs> Yeah, we got a whole crowd here. Jess is on here, says she created a monster. And Jess says she never got her ass handed to her while she was in the good squad chat. I don't know. Is that true to that? Yeah, because she's a tough cookie and she holds her own with the dudes. Yeah, yeah. Greg's on here. Benny's on here. Everyone's on here. The whole family. Fam FOC's on here representing. Good stuff. All right, Thomas, we appreciate All you right, guys. taking up any more of your Thomas. time. We will see you yeah. Wednesday. And uh, looking forward to uh, spending some time in Texas and getting some fire. So we appreciate you, Goon Squad. Uh, live coming up. Make sure you uh, check that out. Next week we got Mike Claudio on, uh, another member of the Goon Squad, also going to bring you some fire. Uh, if you guys are appreciating this, throw some uh, loves and likes on here and some comments. And uh, we appreciate you all watching. We'll see you next week. All right. Later. Great night. Bye.